Hello and welcome to the From the Finney podcast with me, Jake, me, Ollie, and me, Dan. So, uh, this episode is slightly later than usual because of the bank holiday weekend, but we will discuss the win over Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday and we'll look ahead to the whole game as well. weekend good bank holiday yeah it was decent yeah just a quiet one for me yeah. enjoyed well, enjoyed the cricket yesterday yeah shout out sir ben stokes yeah best best yeah. innings i've ever seen ever ever i was i was the only one who uh who said there was a chance yesterday no there's still no chance that that's ever going to happen that's just impossible but i'll take it i enjoyed it uh, and the footy was good on saturday it was decent, yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, it was a good win, but a weird game for me. Um, similar to the Stoke one, I thought, in that we didn't really create, I thought, many clear-cut chances. Um, and obviously we got the two penalties, went 2-0 up, and maybe on, what, 60, 65, 70 minutes around then, we just seemed to be in cruise control until they got one back from some lax defensive work from the wingers but just seemingly from nowhere and then obviously it was squeaky bum time for the last 15-20 minutes yeah felt like a proper game didn't it always does to be fair when we always seem to have good games at, against Sheffield Wednesday at Deepdale yeah uh, but yeah thought, as you said we were comfortable and then Baba went off and knew you came on at a similar time and that just changed the momentum of the game for me um, but it was quite exciting, to be fair, the last 20 minutes, because before that, it was just going to peter out into a 2-0. But their goal was made it more interesting and three home wins in a row for the first time in probably two or three years. Yeah, I think since Alex Neal's come in. Maybe, yeah. Uh, so, and he's using the squad well as well. I think he made four changes on Saturday from Stoke. So, yeah, just another good win. Yeah. I don't mind us um, not creating too many chances as long as we take the ones that we do, and we have, we've been seeming to do that, that quite consistently. Yeah. Whereas pro- a, a problem last season was not taking the chances we'd get. So yeah, I think we're top we scorers, doing, aren't we? We're top scorers in the league, I think, along with Leeds. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think we scored ten. Leeds have scored ten as well. I think. To be fair to Neil, when he came in, he said he wants to um, bring a more attacking style of play and I think last season was evidence of that with the goals that we scored and then obviously so far this season as well yeah it doesn't feel like we're playing more attacking though does it really we're just... no it doesn't but it... I think scoring more goals than we have previously yeah. is a sign of that isn't it yeah well we've had how many penalties have we had three penalties so... three, yeah uh, and then Gally oh, free yeah. kick we had the galley free kick and we had a corner, so we've only scored five from open play. But scoring yeah. goals, that's all that matters. Scoring goals, yeah. DJ keeps tucking penalties away, so got lucky yesterday with that first one. On Saturday. Saturday even. Shit. Yeah, yeah. From my angle, I thought he'd saved it. Probably should have yeah. saved it. I'd saved it too. Yeah. But yeah. Nah, I'd be disappointed if I was their keeper. Mm. Yeah, but. I thought it would be Billy Bowden winning all the penalties, but Maguire's won all three penalties for us so far. He looks quite sharp. Mm, does, definitely does. So that's something that might continue happening. But yeah, three home wins in a row. and Obviously, we've got Hull on Tuesday, but then Forrest on Saturday. And then that takes us into the international break. So if we, go, if we just get our first away point on the board, yeah. then it, it yeah. will have been a very good start. I'm not too concerned about what happens with Hull, to be honest. Nah, same. I'd, I'd rather have, I'd rather get a point at the, at the city ground than beat Hull, to be honest. I mean, it's nice to get through the cup rounds and maybe get you know an attractive Premier League draw or something like that, but ultimately, I'm not too fussed. It's just 10 quid a ticket, isn't it? Go and watch football again. Yeah, I think I'll be going tomorrow night. 
Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I might do. Um, so yeah, the from a tactical point of view, uh, the chef wins the game. Um, as always, I think I'll let you lead on this, Ollie. I quite enjoy listening to this, like the most of the listeners probably do. Because having gone to a few live games with you, I don't think I've ever sat with anyone who watches football the same way that you do. Well, what do you mean? Just watch it like everyone else watches it? No, I know, but you, the, what you take from it is just... All right, well, yeah, anyway. We were, only, uh, we were all on the Stoke game together. I don't know if this has been mentioned in anything else. But um, me and Jake were sat behind Ollie. And he said four things to us all game. And they were all about the shape of uh, Stokes midfield. Yeah, we first know, we turned around after about two minutes and went, nice diamond, that. Yeah, but when, <laughs> when you see a diamond like that, 20 yards apart each and perfect shape, it's nice seeing it. It's good to see. <laughs> but they're, the, they're the kind of things that make me happy. So Good. We've all got him. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anyway, he played 4 2 3 1 yesterday, same as normal. Uh, Brown was slightly deeper than DJ alongside Pearson. Um, Similar system, Sheffield Wednesday. Obviously, they had Kieran Lee and uh, Hutchinson deeper with Harry Bannon in the number 10. And that's probably why we left Brown deeper. A, to allow DJ to continue in the number 10, where he's been a revelation, some would say. No, uh, I think he but, definitely has. 100%. But, but also, to nullify Barry Bannon, who had a very quiet game. Can't remember him really doing anything, but that's that's probably why Brown stayed deeper as well. Um and Brown made nine successful tackles, which probably went under the radar as well on, on Saturday. But yeah, same as same as what we've seen at home. Two two wide players, but very narrow. Um, like playing in the Caleb Robinson position like last season. And then tucking in and then obviously Fisher and Rafferty getting higher up. Which is probably what we've... Well, we've scored 10 goals, probably... The main thing you can take is the full-backs probably being more attacking this season. But now it worked quite well. They set off set off us and let us have the ball. But Which I, I didn't think they'd do that, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, I they mean... They seem to press quite a lot, Sheffield Wednesday. That's what they, usually makes it so difficult for us, is, is we like time on the ball. And they seem to give it us on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I think... I'm not sure... To be fair, I think they did. They always go quite direct and sit in a deep block, from what I've seen. But I thought uh, Sam Hutchinson had a very quiet game yesterday. Yeah. Was he usually? Uh, He's usually, usually right in the thick of it with Pearson. Yeah. Similar player, but yeah. Um, no, it worked quite well. Um, controlled the ball until like the final third, because Stocky just doesn't move. And when you get into the final third, you need your striker to affect the game in any kind of way, but. Stockley did absolutely nothing yesterday. We'll come on to him in a bit, but he completed six passes in 96 minutes, which says it all, really. So, uh, And then Bowden had a quiet game for his standards um, against a good fullback, uh, Morgan Fox. And then, so we just relied on Maguire, who made the difference twice, obviously winning both penalties against Odabaggio, who's a winger. So, like you yeah, said, he looked- I didn't realise it was Adabajo, but yeah. I thought when watching the game, it was like he's mm. not a very good fullback. Yeah, he's he's a winger. He's course, a winger. That would, yeah, that would explain so, it. There, yeah. there, are, there are a couple of times where Westwood went absolutely mad at him. Yeah. Yeah, he just doesn't look comfortable like, at all. Set pieces, yeah. It'd be like playing Ginelli at, at fullback. Um, but yeah, Maguire obviously made the difference with two two penalties, and then obviously two 0 up. Sheffield Wednesday went three up top. Nui, Fletcher and little Italian... Uh, Forest, Fernando little Argent- Forestieri. Yeah, little Argentinian bastard. Um, bastard and to be fair, the key word there. Yeah, to be fair, that, that causes a lot of problems. Cause obviously Always went, does. Yeah, because they, they had a spare player. We had two centre-backs, obviously. They had three very narrow strikers. And then uh, Bauer went off. So we went to three at the back and Stockley had his best game for P&E at centre-back. Heading things away. So he made himself useful um, and then saw the game out. So that was it. But look, again, there was nothing in the game, really, was there, between Not the two really. sides. It's just one of them that we've come on the right side of again. Yeah. So it's a horrible new year. He just, <laughs> yeah. He's, playing against him. I swear he's shocking, but when he plays against us, he's class. Weird, well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the strangest thing is how like he just picks the ball up in the middle of the pitch and just runs forward. It seems to just get through everybody. That's yeah, a battering ram, isn't it? 
right after they scored, they had that chance where he picked the ball up. I think he just palmed Fisher away. Yeah, got, I was going to say. Pearson, yeah. And I thought that was destined to be a goal. Yeah. He just, he's very powerful. Well, they, is, that, is that the one where they played it to the byline and story then cleared it? No, that was on the other side. He went for a corner. We got a last-ditch tackle in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that, that was an in, important interception from story, to be fair. Mm. And to be fair, we said, I can't remember who I said, but last season we probably wouldn't have won that game. Might yeah, have, I said it in the pub after. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good sign, to be fair, especially with Bauer going off, that we still managed to shore up the defence. Well, the last the last two times we've played Sheffield Wednesday at Deepdale before this, we've had a lead going on going late into the game, and both times it's felt absolutely inevitable that we yeah got that we drop points. That's how it felt on Saturday. It felt, and it, like, it, it felt like that on Saturday, but we somehow held out, and I think yeah. that really showed the progress that we're making as a club. Yeah, a little bit of luck as well, I'd say. But it's about oh, yeah. time. You, you've got to have luck sometimes. Before. Yeah, it's about time we had a bit of luck against Sheffield Wednesday. Because I think, that what what was it, 97th minute, Adam Reach, absolute worldy. Two when seasons were, ago, wasn't it? Yeah, and then yeah. it was 3-3 three, three last held, season. Held to him in the box, he just twatted it top bins. Yeah, so now they're always good games. I don't know why, but they just always seem to be good games against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think the Sheffield Wednesday fans on Twitter afterwards, pretty much, were of that opinion as well, in mm. that, that they don't really enjoy coming to Deepdale because... Things never really well, go yeah. their way. It's but... not 20 games since they've won here, isn't it? Well, is we it really? Don't... Something like that. They hate coming to Deepdale and we hate going to Hillsborough. We always yeah. get beat there and we always seem to do okay against them. But yeah. But ta- tactically, just going back, I'd say it shows the amount of options that we've got now because we set up tactically very different to what we did on Wednesday night. Mm. Uh, and... It's good as well. Um, I think that. Neil's using the squad. Um, I think someone on Twitter, uh, we asked for some questions before, and um, someone said, do you think Alex Neil is right to take a horses for courses approach to his team selection so far this season? A Wednesday fan on the way to the ground seemed to think that we can't get promoted if we don't play our best team every week. Consistency versus the need to keep players fresh. But I think he's playing his best team for what, the situation yeah. calls for to be honest this is this is what always confuses me like people say what's your best 11 it just com- it just depends on a lot of things yeah depends on a lot of things yeah and like obviously i'd normally say galley would be in our strongest 11 but that would have been his third game in a week. a week so it's just nice to be able to give him a rest maybe give him half an hour on tuesday and then back in for saturday so and then got options in the number 10 and in the wide areas Obviously, we're a bit short defensively, um, but no, just good options. Like like we said before, the season started without a keeper and a striker. If you take them away, we've got very good options, mm. and that's that's probably still how how I feel about that. Yeah, definitely. I think as well um, for the for the league games, at least we've been fairly consistent in the. Rudd, there's pretty much the same back four, barring swapping Fisher and Clark around for the odd game. Yeah. And a midfield of Pearson, DJ, and then Maguire. Mm. And every everyone else has sort of been changed around that. So you could say that we are starting our best players, arguably. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we're just a, a sort of changing what we need to change based on the game ahead in the other positions. Yeah, there is genuine competition as well because if you look at Brad Potts, I think he started them 12 games last season in a row that we went unbeaten. Uh, yeah. I don't think he started yet, has he, in the league? No. Uh, no, he hasn't. Well, maybe he started at Millwall, actually. Actually, yeah, I think he did Yeah, start. no, he did. Right, but he's, he's, not, he's not played many minutes. Same as Brown, he's not played. You'd expect Brown to start every game so far. Mm. Uh, uh, but he... And Barkey as well, so... Just changing it based on the opposition, but I think um, on Saturday, I think Barkey would, it's the type of game Barkey would come into. Uh, maybe Brown as well, but we we'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, very good options like in the forward areas and in the midfield. And even Bayliss has not, not played a minute in the league, I don't think. Yes, yeah, so again, going back to the fan questions that we asked for on Twitter, someone's asked when, when will we see Bayliss in the league? And I, to be honest, I think it'll be 
similar to what happened with Story last season. Um, I think he'll get drip fed in. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to remember he's only 20 years old. As much potential as he might have, he's never played at this level. Mm. And we've got bags and bags of options. You know, there's nothing to say that an injury won't happen on Tuesday night or next Saturday. And someone's out for a month or six weeks and then that's his opportunity then to come in. Yeah. There's no rush, is there really, with that no, one? No, not really. It's a long season, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, uh, ho- hopefully he plays tomorrow night. I think he will, but... Yeah, well... But we'll also, le- yeah, Ledson as well, who's not, not really played. Mm. Um, yeah, so before we come on to the break then, um, just cover something that gets my back up a little bit. Um, yeah, it, def- just... it definitely does annoy you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's mainly on Facebook. I hardly ever see it on Twitter. But it's just weird behaviour from fans. Like someone, and I've seen I've seen a few people say it. Obviously during this season because DJ's played well, but people posting in the North End group saying, "Oh, where are all the Daniel Johnson haters at now?" That's a good oh. question. Where are they? Where have they well, gone? It pisses me off because it's like, are people not allowed to have an opinion? Obviously not. Well, yeah, obviously not. Fuck me. Why? Why does it wind you up that it's just people? Just it's just like a, it's just a it's just a brag for no reason whatsoever. It's the same thing as when Hugo was here and people actively didn't want him to score. Yeah, it, again, it's weird behaviour. We've just got some exactly. weird fans. It's absolutely puerile. I mean, they're the same sorts of people that I mean, they weren't saying in the middle of one of DJ's poorer spells of form, like, oh no, don't worry, it'll come good. They weren't coming out to the hills to shout his praises or whatever I mean some some people might have oh shit I'm just pulling the phone out some people might have done but I mean, you very rarely see when a player yeah like, exactly it, most people jump on the bandwagon don't they yeah there were there were people saying um, like they'd sell him to Wigan for like 2 million which yeah, was just that yeah I'd drive him there myself and stuff yeah. like that but the one thing that I don't understand about um, what gets labelled at DJ inconsistency all our players are inconsistent. They're all inconsistent. They're just all inconsistent. It's yeah, a they are. So why does it always get labelled at DJ? That's what I don't understand. I think because in, in, for me, and I've said it before on previous pods, he, uh, I only really remember two or three standout games from last season, whereas already this season he's been excellent in all of them. Like, you know how good he can be. Yeah. But that, I just don't understand why... Bit. I don't see why that doesn't get like thrown at Barky or something or Brown. It does. Why do you think yeah. Barky did that celebration against Rovers when he scored? He was getting copious amounts of shit. Alan Brown yeah. at the minute is getting a load of shit. We've had three players who've celebrated like that. Um, Maguire. Maguire, DJ and Barky. Well, yeah, even earlier on this season, Maguire was getting a load, wasn't he? Yeah, about him not being able to play as a number nine. Yeah, it's yeah. just... Uh, yeah, people can criticise players, but people can equally... Well, no, that is the right thing. Pe- as much as people can criticise players, people can be fans of him, but it doesn't mean to say that you you got to go out and call out people. And mm. like, At the time like, they gave their opinion, they were probably more than right to give that opinion. Yeah, it's like what, what I said about Rudd at the start of the season. Just because he's had a few good games yeah. doesn't, mean, doesn't mean that that opinion has changed. I mean, I, I, st- I stood up and gave Rudd a... Uh... A hearty round of applause when he claimed one of the balls late on towards the end of the game, and I was getting proper into every little save he was making. But yeah. um, that doesn't mean I've gone back on. No, exactly. What I've said previously, which is we probably need a goalkeeper it, at least in January if we want to be sure of challenging for the playoffs. Mm. The same for um, Stockley. What you know, if he, if he comes out and has three or four good games in a row, it's not going to change my opinion of him. I don't think he's good enough. Yeah. Um, but the thing is with Johnson, I've never, I've never said he's shit, and I've never said I want to, want to get rid of him. I've just my main criticism is that he's been inconsistent. Mm. Um, and you know, if a player comes out and has a good game, I'll be fully behind him. I'm not, not going to support a player. Like, like you said at the minute, Rudd, he's having a somewhat decent run of form by his standards from last season. Yeah, doesn't change my opinion of the fact that I think we need a new keeper. But obviously, I'll back him and praise him when he's done well. Yeah. It just pisses me off. It's like these people get on the high horse. Like, I've always been a Johnson fan. 
Yeah, but oh. people make the people decide something and then don't change their mind about yeah. it. No matter like how what happens. Like Hugo's Hugo scored three goals now in five games for QPR, but he missed that sitter on Saturday. Did you see? Yeah, yeah. From a yard out, and people saying he's shit just because he's missed one sitter. So mm-hmm. fans are like that. Fans Fickle. Are, yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, the, we've said and it, obvi- and times, we? it obviously gets to the players as well. Mm. Right. Well, yeah, like you said, you know, Barky, Maguire, who else in recent times have celebrated like they've DJ, DJ been more than aware of um, fan criticism online. You know, they obviously see it. Oh, oh is that what DJ's fingers in the air things about? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm blocking out the haters. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. They're all good players, though. Yeah, but and they're all inconsistent, which is just which is why they're playing in the championship. It's natural, isn't it? Yeah. Even Prem players are inconsistent. Mm, they're just better inconsistent players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. But yeah, yeah. now as long as they keep playing well, whatever. But the only thing that matters is if the manager rates them or not, and the manager clearly rates them. Exactly. I just think fans need to stop point scoring on social media. It's petty. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll call that part one, boys, I reckon. Yeah. Cool. part two of the From the Finney podcast. Uh, in this half, we're going to talk player performances and we're going to look ahead to the whole game as well. So I think one that's gone under the radar for me so far this season is Joe Rafferty. Um, obviously, we spoke quite a lot earlier on in the season about how um, incompetent it was of the club and how they managed the, or seemed to not manage the left-back situation. Um, but I think it's safe to say that Raf has stood in very well so far um, and long may it continue to be honest he's, he's shown that he's at the minute more than adequate cover for Andrew Hughes um, but again going back to what we said in at the end of part one it's just a matter of time before he makes a mistake and people start jumping on his back again And yeah I think He's done okay for me. I think yeah. maybe people are expecting him to be absolutely shocking. And then maybe people are thinking he's done better than he has. But he's not let us down, has he, defensively? No, he hasn't. I think solid, if uninspiring, is probably yeah. a good way to... Yeah, I think Hughes will be back. Well, I don't think he'll play tomorrow night. But if not I think Saturday... He'll be back for Saturday. Yeah. So I'd expect Hughes to come straight back in. But yeah, he's done, he's done fine. He just quite... on his Instagram yesterday, I think. Hughes. Yeah, picture looks, of him playing with uh, yeah. a little, um, a little what they call with the sand that runs through them. No idea what you're talking about. A sand timer thing. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh right. One of them on it. Yeah. Like, so, basically saying I'll be back soon. Yeah. So, but no, he's done as well as probably I could have expected. Yeah. No, I agree. Definitely agree. Yeah. I think uh, was it you, Ollie, that said in the pub that he he knows his limits and he. Yeah, I think he does, doesn't he? To be quite, he's quite aware of his capabilities. I think that makes him a very solid defender because mm. he knows he knows what he can do and he doesn't try to do any more than that and get caught short. Yeah, he doesn't overcommit himself. Mm. Yeah. And he made he made no tackles on Saturday, which was quite surprising. He's a very patient defender, and he mm. normally just he normally just um, jockeys the fullback uh, or the the winger or the opposition fullback and yeah. make makes them come back inside. It was several uh, times, particularly in the first half when Wednesday were having a couple of decent spells. He did very well against uh, Jacob Murphy to stop him getting crosses in. Yeah. Because with, yeah. with, Steve, with Stephen Fletcher, you can't let crosses come in, as we as we eventually found out. Yeah, he's done well. He's done well, to be fair. He's he's definitely going to be a bit part player. I don't see him getting in ahead of Clark and Fisher when they're both fit, but obviously Clark's out. Looks like he's going to be out for a while. Um so with Hughes coming back in, I think he's obviously going to be a good option to have on either flank at full-back. Yeah, he's just a body, and he? He's not going to let you down. 
Yeah. But you know what you're going to get, don't you, really? But, yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously he's a lot more experienced than Josh Earl, um, which is why he went out on loan in the first place. But obviously he's picked up that injury, which is disappointing. Yeah, it's a bit of a shitter all round, that, isn't it, really? Yeah, to be honest, but I, I don't want to yeah. go over all ground too much. No. We've covered that plenty. Um, the next one, I think... Um, well, I know where Dan stands on it because of what he said in the pub after the game. But, yeah, Jaden Stockley, for me, still not doing a lot to impress. Um, he barely affected the game. You, the one thing that you could argue is he helped win the first penalty by dragging the Wednesday centre-back out. Um, but the long ball from Rudd just essentially bounced over him. And Maguire, once he had the beating of the, the Wednesday full-back, he got his body in there and... That was it. So he didn't really direct, directly contribute to winning it. It's not like he won a knock-on or a header or anything like that. Um, but yeah, yeah. He, he's not really contributed much, even against Bradford. Um, he looked like yeah. he was struggling a little bit. I just really don't like his lack of mobility, and it just limits him massively. And I've thought that since he came in, really. But um, just, just really struggled on Saturday to just get involved in the game. Even I think he com- obviously he completed six passes in 96 minutes, which is a pass every 15 minutes. So he mm. just don't don't get he's, and he's quite easy to defend against. Like he just doesn't move. So if you come up against a physical centre half like Tom Lee's, he's gonna um, struggle, isn't he? Yeah, he only won five out of 17 headers. Yeah, to be fair, he did all right for Maguire's first penalty. Obviously, just being there, but. And I've seen a lot of people say he's playing well, and I, just, I don't know if that's just people just wanting to see him play well. But yeah, just, I think just, I think it is. Just didn't really offer anything, and then when you compare it to Hugo, mm. not just in terms of goals, but in terms of physicality, Work mobility, rate. yeah, the way he suits how we set up, it's just a massive downgrade, really. Yeah. Um, I think we mentioned it a couple of pods ago. If um, we essentially bought Stockley for. Ten times the ten times less the money, less than the money we got for Hugo, mm. and for that you're going to get a fraction of the player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have been Stockley's biggest advocate out of the three of us. Yeah, I'll give you that one, Dan. I've wanted to see him do well. I've liked it when he has done well, but I mean, Saturday was his weakest game for us until he dropped back to centre back. Yeah, I thought he did better at centre back, to be honest. Despite nearly giving away a penalty, um, but mm. I mean, if he if he performs as he did for the first eighty minutes, more often than not, they can't see him being in the starting eleven and me being happy about it. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, like you said um, just a minute ago, you know, I don't want to see any player play badly, and if a player comes out and plays well, I will support them, I will back them, but at the minute, he's not giving me any any reason to. To back him at all, I'm just not seeing anything. Mm, me neither. That I think in the coming weeks, obviously, I think we'll probably see more of Barky up front again, and maybe even Andre Green ahead of Stockley. Yeah, which just says a lot because the way we play, you just need you need to be mobile, and Stockley's just the opposite. And we played well on Saturday, in it like passing and possession based football, but when there's no one penetrating behind. Mm-hmm. It just becomes quite easy to defend against. Which oh. M- Maguire kind of did that job, really, didn't he? Yeah, that's what he's been doing from the left. Yeah, but, he was, but if we've only got it coming from outside left, especially when Bowden didn't have as good a game as he's capable of, I mean, it's probably why we didn't create many chances. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have that punch up front. Yeah, and I mean, we didn't really set up to get crosses in as well because we attack so narrow. Um. Just didn't really work out, and maybe because he started against Wednesday last season, Neil was probably thinking along similar lines, but it just yeah. didn't work, did it? And he's got to that game as well, did not he? Yeah, he's got a good header, didn't he? I think. But no, I can't believe people think he played well, but everyone sees it differently, don't he? But yeah, that's, you just you just need a bit more. The game, isn't it? Yeah. As we said earlier, it's all about opinions. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. What. Uh, he might start. Oh no, maybe. Mm, I, mean, maybe pe- pe- I think people also mistake effort for quality sometimes. Mm. Yeah, 
definitely. Gee, it doesn't look like he puts that much effort into me, though. He just lumbers about. That's what it seems to me, anyway. Yeah, he's not exactly quick, is he? He just doesn't. He just don't know. He's not. He's for his for his physicality. He's not aggressive at all, is he? So, no, not in, not in the mold that Hugo no, was. No. So he, yeah, I'd even argue. From the one game that I saw Louis Malt play, he was more aggressive than Stockley, mm. and he's half the size of him. Yeah. I, think, I think Stockley's game would benefit massively from just being 50% more nasty. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he just doesn't have that in him. Seems like a nice lad. Maybe that's just, yeah. maybe that's the issue. Maybe. Um, so looking ahead to the whole City game, it's a tough one to, to really discuss, to be honest, I think, because it's. It's obviously going to be two changed 11s. Um, you would imagine that Bayless will come in, Green will come in, Ledson will probably come in. Um, and then I think outside of those three in the keeper, mm. there's going to be very few changes elsewhere. I think Stockley will start. I think Maybe. had a bower, especially yeah. after. I Davis. think, yeah, I reckon it'll be seven or eight changes, me. Yeah. Yeah, think, you're probably right. I'm chatting shit. I think I think Ledson, Harrop, uh, maybe Barky. this Barky Brown. Yeah, like Dan said, Story and then Ripley. So six, seven, eight changes maybe. Mm. But like like you said, it Hull look quite good going forward from what I've seen. Yeah, I watched a little bit of the second half against Rovers and they came out of the traps. I mean, I've no idea how they played in the first half, but. You know, I thought the first 10, 15 minutes against Rovers in the second half, they were unlucky not to take a lead. Um, yeah, they got good players. they got, obviously, Bowen and Grzycki are the two main ones. Yeah. Good, good attack. Surprised that they're still there, to be honest. Yeah, I thought at least one would go. Well, I don't know if they'll play Tuesday. I'm not sure how many of the options they have, like up front or in the attacking areas. I don't really know who their other attackers are, to be fair. They lost Fraser Campbell, Anthony, in summer. So I reckon it probably will play, but should, um, based on what I saw from Doncaster last season, Grant McCann likes to attack, so it should be a decent attacking game. Yeah, it won't be like the Bradford one. Well, what was that for now? Was it a shocking game that? But well, Bradford would piss. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, no that's what I mean game. in terms of the opposition. It won't be like playing Bradford. But... No, it should be a decent game. Yeah, no. Grant McCann will just be open. We start Crow. Yeah. Oh yeah, we won't make about. that mistake again. Definitely won't make that mistake again. Although I wouldn't be surprised if he was on the bench. No, I won't be on the bench. Oh, was Rudd on? Was Rudd on the bench against Bradford? I don't know, but he just. No, I think Crow was. Was he actually? Oh my days! I can't remember. God, that's surprising. Yeah, Crow was on the bench. Mm. Yeah. So, you see, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to keepers. Yeah, at least you're not peddling nonsense, Dan. Uh, um. Yeah, I mean, it is nice to get a cup run and obviously, you know, there's the chance of um, a big team coming to Deepdale or going away to a Premier League side, which obviously fans always enjoy. But, I mean, not really. Yeah. Oh, if we go out, provided no. it's not embarrassment. No, I'd obviously, like you say, want to get a big team if we can in the next round because it's always just a good game in it to play but yeah it don't really matter like Dan said you'd rather get a point on Saturday yeah than get yeah. than win tomorrow night I mean so, you know you know I love a cliche and I really would rather focus on the league to be honest yeah same yeah same. no same completely but agree it'll be good to see obviously a few of the few of the, maybe Bayless and then a yeah. bit more a bit more from Harrop and stuff Andre Green mm. so it'll just be a decent game to watch not much I think, pressure I think, just on, on Harrop, I think the manager's doing the right thing. Um, you know, he was out for a long, long time. I mean, you look at Bowden, he's he started a lot more. And I think you could argue in the last two games, he's not really been as effective as you would have liked to have seen him be. Um, so I think with Harrop, he's, he's, he's doing the right thing, just dipping him in and out. Mm. Um, obviously, he played against Stoke, scored. Played against Bradford, scored. Yeah. I think he was never going to start on Saturday because he played the full 90s, didn't he, against yeah. Stoke. First 90 minutes, obviously. So, didn't do himself any harm, did he? On Wednesday no, definitely night. not. So, yeah, I agree. He's managing him quite well. And, and I think, even though he's only played one full 90 against Bradford, I think that's how things are going to go this season for uh, Bayless as well. Mm. I think we'll see a lot more of that this season just because of the options we've got. Mm. Centre-back, centre-mid. 
Um, you know, the wide attackers. We've got we've got plenty of options there. Yeah. No one's hopefully going to be burnt out by March, April like they were last season. Fingers crossed. So, yeah. Yeah. And like we said before, I can't remember what pod it was on, but you, I said we had these options, but you hope he doesn't just use his favourites. And to be fair, he's not done, has he? No, he hasn't. Because Barky's not started much and neither is Brown. So, long, well, I mean, long may that continue. The more this is sort of his team and he's getting to know all of them. Yeah. Putting the squad together, and I think he's gonna. We're gonna finish the season with him having eighteen to twenty players that are, he can consistently, confidently use, rather than last yeah. season it was twelve, thirteen. Yeah, that's the big difference, I think, this season. Yeah, I think so. it, that will maybe change a little bit around January, I reckon, with some incomings. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. we need a forward, and perhaps we need cover at left back. Clark's going to be out for a while, but obviously January is what four and a half, five months away. So yeah, it's tough plenty. to call. But I think yeah, I think there's going to be yeah, I think like you said, Dan, there's going to be a few, a lot more, sorry, than last season that we'll see regularly picked from. Um, which, like you said, Ali will hopefully give a lot more players um, a bit a bit of time to rest and yeah. find their feet over a, a longer period. Mm. Yeah, it, it's good all around that because technically, tactically, and physically, like there's just better options now. Mm. And yeah, no, definitely is. So yeah, tomorrow is going to be a prime example. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to it. No, oh, yeah, should be a good game. Yeah. Get the FTF gang back together. Yeah, I think I might sit on the Finney as well. Get a, a different, a different, a different perspective. Yeah, looking forward to it. Cool. Right, I think unless either of you two have got anything else to add about anything that we've covered, then we'll call that a podcast. Right, cool. Yeah, sound. Nice Sweet. Job. Right. So, yeah, thanks for listening to episode 13 of the From the Finney podcast. As always, if you can share, like, retweet, tell your friends, tell your family, people in the street, whatever, um, it's always appreciated. The pod is widely available now on different streaming platforms. You can subscribe to us on the majority of them and keep up to date with when new episodes get published. And as always, if you aren't already, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Just search for From the Finney and say hello. And we'll, we're, how many people have we brought on? Four, five? Four, five new writers. So yeah. we'll be publishing a load of new content throughout the season. Um, they're all very good writers, all got their own opinions and different writing styles. So keep an eye out for new pieces of content that'll be going up on the website. And finally, thanks to you two boys for coming on again. Nice one, Jake. Nice one, Dan. See you tomorrow, lads. Yeah, see you tomorrow and until next week for another pod. Cool. Nice one. See you later, boys.